my name is Amelia Barwise and I'm a research associate in the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine. Um, this video is about um, an article that's coming out in upcoming um, Mayo Clinic proceedings and it's entitled Differences in Code Status and End-of-Life Decision-Making in Patients with Limited English Proficiency in the Intensive Care Unit. So why is this work important? Um, according to the 2013 census, one in every 12 adults has limited English proficiency. That's over 25 million people in the US. And this proportion has increased um, substantially over the last 20 years. We define limited English proficiency as not speaking English as a primary language and potentially having uh, a limited ability to read, speak, write or understand English. We know there are many uh, adverse health outcomes associated with language barriers in general, including increased rates of hospital readmission, longer hospital stays, lower rates of understanding discharge instructions, low rates of receiving recommended preventive services and having a primary care provider, higher rates of deferring needed medical care and compromised patient-physician communication, among other things. When we consider the complex and sensitive issues and conversation at end of life and combine that with a language barrier, it's quite likely that the potential for suboptimal communication exists, which in turn may affect quality of care. We know in the outpatient setting, patients with language barriers are at risk for lower quality of end of life care, suboptimal discussions about goals of care, and not having an accurate understanding of their diagnoses and prognoses, and receiving suboptimal symptom control. In the ICU setting, studies have shown that family members of patients with limited English proficiency in the intensive care unit are at risk for receiving less information and emotional support during ICU family conferences. Having identified a knowledge gap about the effect of limited English proficiency on decision making for life support and at end of life for hospitalised patients in the ICU, we decided to determine whether code status, advanced directives and decisions to limit life support were different for patients with limited English proficiency in the ICU as compared to patients whose primary language was English. How do we go about exploring this? Um, we conducted a uh, retrospective cohort study um, looking at the ICU admissions to the seven ICUs at Mayo Clinic over a three year period and our cohort was uh, almost 28,000 patients. We used automated retrieval queries to abstract the variables and outcomes that we wanted and we also did some manual um, data abstraction to verify some of our data. Our main results um, were as follows. Uh, when we adjusted for severity of illness and some other factors that may have influenced some of these outcomes, we found that patients classified as having limited English proficiency were less likely to change their full code status to do not resuscitate code status. Furthermore, they took almost four days longer to change. We also noted that um, patients with limited English proficiency were less likely to have comfort measures only orders placed prior to death. And if they did have it placed, it took about 19 days longer to transition to the comfort measures only order. The use of a comfort measures only order before death reflects a decision to withhold or withdraw unnecessary treatments that may extend life um, and also reflects a decision to implement therapies to relieve symptoms that are common at the end of life, including breathlessness, nausea and anxiety. Those with limited English proficiency were also less likely to have an advanced directive. Some other findings that we noted were that patients with limited English proficiency were more likely to have mechanical ventilation and to receive restraints despite no differences in agitation levels. Their hospital stay was also about two days longer on average. The documentation of family conferences um, was twice as high for patients with limited English prof proficiency. Um, so this suggests that despite uh, organised family conferences, there's still a pattern among patients with limited English proficiency for less frequent or delayed withdrawal of care. So why are these results important? These differences are important and reflect differences in decision making, um, which may in turn influence uh, end of life quality of care. These results may reflect preferences that are personal, cultural, or religious based about goals of care and interventions at end of life, or they may reflect communication or systems issues. Implementing um, Comfort measures only before death is a recommended component of providing optimal palliative care at the end of life. 
So um, the f this finding needs, needs further study, as does our finding about uh, low rates of do not resuscitate. Advanced care planning is the cornerstone of end-of-life care, despite its many limitations. Um, and it's been shown that patients who do have an advanced directive are more likely to receive medical care that's concordant with their state of preferences than patients who do not have an advanced directive. We're currently exploring these issues further using a qualitative research methodology to try and find out the why that explains what we have noted. The lower rates of comfort measures only and switching to a do not resuscitate order for patients limiting proficiency may reflect two possibilities. One, that patients uh, who have limited proficiency have an authentic desire to um, die with full medical therapies rather than with comfort measures and they want no uh, withdrawal of cares. It may also reflect, our findings may also reflect that there are some communication or other barriers, systemic barriers that prevent the healthcare teams from optimally assessing and implementing um, preferences, um, including, for example, comfort measures. If there are indeed systems issues that are causing these differences that we've noted, we would consider that this is a disparity in care. Our sample um, had huge cultural, linguistic and religious heterogeneity. Um, and so this may imply that there is a, a communication issue that is driving some of these differences that we've noted. In conclusion then, um, the proportion of adults in the US with limited age proficiency is, is high. It's about 25 million people, or 8.5% of the population. Uh, and we've studied um, this group who are admitted to the ICU and Mayo Clinic, and we've looked at the differences that, between patients who speak English and patients who have limited English proficiency. We've adjusted for um, factors that may explain some of these dif differences, including education and uh, illness, severity of illness. So these differences are important, and our next step will be to um, try and understand why we are seeing these differences and whether these reflect genuine preferences for end-of-life care or whether they reflect um, poor communication and systems issues that are leading to a disparity in care. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.